Rachel in Wiltshire again today and we're following the dreaded guidebook but luckily we've got OS maps this time. Uh, there's plenty of bullocks around for us to wrangle with and uh, we're going to be walking in a Neolithic landscape today. So we're doing this big long circular walk from Nap Hill car park here. Uh, Nap Hill is the big uh, hill just behind me. You can also see just in the foreground a round barrow as well. This whole landscape is Neolithic and so uh, Nap Hill has an enclosed Neolithic settlement on the top and then you've got kind of Bronze Age bowl barrows all dotted around the landscape which we can see. So filled with archaeology, amazing. We're going for a circular route uh, walk around Alton Barnes. We've got some great views um, all around and there's some parachutists up there. So it looks like it's gonna be a really beautiful walk. Um, we should go via Wands Dyke, uh, which is, um, has Saxon groundworks in it. And it looks really cool because it, it's all Ridgeway-y. Um, so yeah, that should be a good walk. Uh So you can see over there the Alton Barnes White Horse. So there's about eight uh, white horses along the White Horse Way, which we are familiar with from the Fifield Walk, uh, parts of it at least. And these are more 19th century representations. So there's the Uffington White Horse, which is at the start of Ridgeway, which is that really ancient Neolithic uh, chalk sculpture. And then 19th century antiquarians and enthusiasts uh, dotted the the Ridgeway and Wiltshire Downs with these beautiful uh, these beautiful carvings into the hillsides. Uh, something that adds character and flavour to, to this area. Not that it needs much of it, much more of it to be honest, because it's very characterful. So we're at Alton Friars now, which is just down below the hill, and this is a beautiful medieval 15th century church just behind me. Uh, inside the church, apparently, if you lift up some trapdoors, then you'll find sarsen stones buried underneath the church. So it's possible that this church has been built on an ancient megalithic uh, stone circle or long barrow or something like that. So like I say, there's archaeology everywhere. This giant new tree, but this is hundreds of years old.
for walking along the Kennet Avon Canal uh, now, which we've been to before on foot and also on kayak. And so last week we went on a little kayaking trip down the, the canal and it's absolutely gorgeous being on the water, just amongst all the reeds and the hedgerows, amongst the moorhens and, and herons. So lovely. Uh, this walk has been really good because it's incorporated so many different parts of Wiltshire's landscape, like the Downs and now the canal. Let's see what we see next. So we are now at Old Canning's Long Barrow and I pointed to it in the distance and said to Rachel, oh look, there's something amazing up there, because I could just see this ancient Neolithic looking Long Barrow. And I did actually think that it looked very well preserved and I wondered why I had not heard of one at Old Canning's before. But anyway, we've walked up to it and ended up essentially in a Long Barrow built in 2004 and it's preserved for actual modern cremation burials. So it's interesting in that, that neo-pagans must be building Neolithic barrows now. It's crazy. Gosh, it's been a hot one this walk, but I've been enjoying it. It's good to um, go on a long hot walk because by the end uh, that uh, fizzy can of soda or, or J2O is so much more worth it. Behind me is Rybury Hill Fort, so an Iron Age hill fort around 2000, uh, just over 2000 years old. Um, it seems young though compared to all the Neolithic stuff that you can see, which is around sort of 3,500 years old. Um, though the hill itself has been occupied in the Neolithic and there is some kind of evidence of univalate fortifications that may have been for, you know, Neolithic, um, a part of a Neolithic settlement essentially. So it has been inhabited for that long. But you can see the, the earthworks just on the top there.
So we're now on to the last quarter of our walk and we've reached the Wands Dyke, which is a large defensive um, earthwork that runs across part of the West Country. Uh, the name comes from Woden's Dyke, so from the old Anglo-Saxon god Woden, uh, sometimes in the Old Norse variety known as Odin. And it was possibly like a big border between two territories in the real early kind of Anglo-Saxon period. But it apparently took hundreds of years to build, so it stands kind of uh, on time. But we're going to walk along this, and uh, this will be one of the last monuments that we see. Dusk is the best time if you're wanting to find archaeological features. And as you can see just on that hill across from us, there's some kind of enclosure kind of thing. Possibly Romano-British. You go along, there's terracing just on the bottom of that great hill there. And even more stripes and terraces. Probably to do with like the hill fort. You've also got, also got the Wandsdyke going across all that. It's down there, look. You've got a little, uh, maybe a, a pillow barrow, a small tumulus, and then of course the Rybury Hill Fort over there. Ah, it's riddled with archaeology. finished the walk now and um, 
we've got back. It was a really tiring walk actually, so it's quite long and up loads of hills, so it felt like a proper hike. Uh, it was 15k uh, roughly, so it was quite a nice long one. Uh, I always think it's good to do a long hike because at the end of the day you always feel uh, really tired and uh, ready for your dinner and uh, a cup of tea in the car and things. Um, this landscape is amazing. I love the North Wessex Downs in Wiltshire. I always said that Wiltshire was uh, one of my favourite counties simply because of the amount of history and uh, heritage, archaeology and things that are here. And um, seriously, this landscape was just filled with chock a block with archaeology to, to look at and see, uh, including, of course, like things from the Neolithic, including like big settlements uh, on the hillsides. Uh, you had Bronze Age barrows and Iron Age hill forts all compacted into this area. You could see Silbury Hill in the, in the distance as well, so you could see the Avebury ritual landscape and all the other tumuli kind of dotted around. Um, and also, of course, you get the Wandsdyke as well. I just wonder, like, such an enormous project is that Wandsdyke. It must have been uh, built by someone quite important in the early stages of Anglo-Saxon times. Of course, though, uh, Nennius did think that King Arthur built it, so it's possible that he built it. But it could have been Woden, the one-eyed god. But anyway, it was really fascinating, and I hope you enjoyed the video with the lovely views. I uh, even got some footage of parachuters as well going off the edge. It was quite fun. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you for watching. Uh, have a lovely weekend. Bye. So I really enjoyed that. And just as a little epilogue, I forgot to mention something quite interesting. Uh, I made a find actually whilst I was walking up um, uh, the Autumn Barns White Horse. So we're on that hill, I think it's called Milk Hill. Um, I found this, a, a strange object. You see it? It's kind of like a piece of flint with a chalk with its chalky nodule encasing it. Um, but I, I think that it's actually genuinely a prehistoric hand tool, so an actual hand axe. Now, it's not a good example, but I think it actually is a example of a piece of worked flint. And I'll tell you why I believe that. So first of all, it's kind of got that ovate form that looks very similar to a Paleolithic hand axe. So let's show you this uh, book. I've seen lots of museums. There you go, you've got that kind of... Uh, pear shaped kind of look to it and um, you see that one there kind of teardrop triangle shaped still with a lot of a chalk still on the nodule um, so if this was a hand axe you've got your your hand holding bit there and then you've got your your blade edge there damaged over time by ploughing and things like that and I would accept that as a, a valid interpretation but um, have a look at the, the little uh, indent here. Let's see if I can focus in on there. Come on camera, are you gonna are you gonna help me out here? There we are. You see all these little indents, individual chips. Now they're the kind of markings that get caused by someone using either a kind of a an antler awl like thing. Probably you'd need one with a beam still on it, I reckon of a little, uh, just a tiny of antler, but what they would do is they would they would uh, chip away little bits of the flint in prehistoric times, probably with a, you'd have a longer beam and handle to this, uh, this antler, and you'd hammer it off with a heavier rock and things, you hammer pieces off to create that kind of, that uh, ovate shape, you see. So uh, pretty cool, and then you've actually got, you can see this concave kind of blade here, so you could probably use that for all kinds of things like um, well, basically digging, chopping, uh, scraping, anything really. And so yeah, I've got, that's uh, just my interpretation, but I think I've generally found something quite interesting there uh, on a, in a site which is well known for its prehistoric archaeology. What do you guys think? Anyway, I think it's quite compelling. Um, I, you know, like you say, it could be, it could be anything, but I just think those kind of... Uh, those markings there, the telltale signs that's been worked in prehistoric industry. Anyway, there you go. And uh, 
in a Somerset or at Stanton Drew Stone Circle, so it's literally become like a gift to ancient gods or something. But I'm pretty glad that I did. I was really pissed off at the time because uh, I thought, no, my external mic! But um, after watching this one start video and seeing how it's messed up my all my speaking bits, it can go to hell. <laughs> so I've got a new one anyway, and that seems to be working very well. Anyway, I hope you enjoy the video, and I uh, hope you join me for the next one. Bye.